Even more super exciting LinkedIn power tips. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt. Emerson. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the WBNL Wandering Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 169. Are we cheersing? Cheers. Uh, 169. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Channel Brian, more on LinkedIn. I love that you have a, pa- a new uh, uh, invigorated Dude. passion around LinkedIn. It's kind of cool. Here, can we try something? So will you? Oh yeah. Uh, will you pull, ah! pull up? You your, know what? All your, I've been doing today has been spilling stuff on myself. Pull so up your there. pull up your cup of coffee. If you're watching on now the video I here, I'm going to share. Sorry. Oh, apparently here. I spilled on Matt. I'm sharing with Matt and here. toast. Oh, there. That's pretty fun. Okay. Cool. All right. Ah! Yes, indeed. Uh, LinkedIn. Oh my gosh, I have found a new just rekindled my love for LinkedIn. I always liked yeah. LinkedIn in the beginning and I've always had a really good profile and try to get, you know, been on a mission to help everybody get a better LinkedIn profile because at a very minimum. Oh, that's Alexa telling me somebody's at the front door. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Um, you know, we need to do an episode on the whole. We sh- uh, cancel Alexa. Don't say her name. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, that's so awesome. Why, if you say that person's name, it's like they're listening all the time anyway, but it's like, so it was really funny. I digress before I talk about LinkedIn. So I said the name and um, I was saying her name and saying like, she's ignoring me. And she came back and goes, I'm not ignoring you. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like we are in Star Trek. (laughs) <laughs> with this uh, this AI, it's really a little scary, to be honest. Okay. Can I ever tell you that story? Laura and I were looking at, there's there's these mo- the, uh, model homes in Irvine that the whole house, all of the houses in this whole track were all just completely wired, right? And they had Alexa in every room. So, and they had little tips, little, little, little thought bubbles up that were telling you things to ask Alexa. Don't so say we were going through the house. Huh? Don't say the name out loud. She can oh, yeah, sorry. So we were going through, I won't say it out loud. So we were saying the... Um, you know, we were asking things throughout the house and it was almost always not doing it right. So I kept saying your name, uh, you're fired. And she kept coming back and saying, I guess I should update my resume. I love it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's She's so awesome. brilliant. For her. I gotta share one more name story. So I was down and I was preparing dinner a week or so ago and I went over and I said, name, Play 21 Pilots, Scaled and Icy, the new album, which I absolutely love. And I said it like three, but I said Siri, Siri, <laughs> oh. Siri. And I was like, what's wrong with her? And then all of a sudden I realized it's not her name. <laughs> she did not the price her phone didn't start playing it though. That's, you know, every once in a while. Oh, so anyway, uh, yeah, that one was funny. Me yelling at, uh, um, and uh, calling her Siri, that was probably just totally, I, the smartest thing would be a comeback, like saying something like, oh, that's not my name. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. All right, so LinkedIn, yes. Yeah, so currently writing a new course for LinkedIn, which has made me dive deeply into everything LinkedIn. I have discovered new cool things about LinkedIn. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Plus, let you know that at WBNL Coaching, we have updated our really, we've had forever, 11 power tips to create an all-star profile. And honestly, that has um, stood the test of time until I discovered there's a couple other things that you need to be doing in your profile, which I'm going to share with you today. Uh, and I lost Matt Emerson. I'm not sure what happened. I'm back. He's back now. Now we switch sides if you're watching us <laughs> on the video. But oh, yeah, we have yeah. a new updated. If you go over to our show notes today for episode 169 in WBNLcoaching.com, click on the podcast link, or I guess he'll probably take you right there. 
just you can go to WNL podcast, WBNL podcast.com. will take you right to our show notes. We have a new updated 14 tips for an all-star LinkedIn profile. And uh, I'm going to cover that a couple of those highlights and a few other cool things I've learned. And what I, what I'm really discovering that is, I think what I have already started to realize is that instead of like Instagram or, or some of these other areas, I really am getting more engagement on LinkedIn following these tips and things I have always known. And I'm just started to do it again. And obviously my demographic is, is talking to real estate agents and brokers and I've connected with lots of real estate professionals and I'm starting to get that engagement just by posting some engaging content. That's and right. that's obviously one of the tips here. So whether or not you want to use LinkedIn as your thing, as your social media platform of choice, it doesn't matter if you want to do that or not. You must, must, must have a really stellar profile. It is amazing to me. And I'm going to go prove it here. And we'll talk about it if you're listening, what we see, because we're going to go do a live demo right now. And I am going to pull up a, a LinkedIn here. And I came across this, this agent. This agent is really knocking it out of the park, in my opinion. Um, so uh, I'm going to skip ahead and I'll come back to the profile part. Her name's Erin Moody, and she is a realtor in Jacksonville Real Estate. Shout out to you, Erin. Uh, way to go on social media, uh, specifically LinkedIn. So she came up in my profile it, she wasn't, it, she wasn't uh, a first degree connection. I just made that happen today. And, uh, but her content is really cool. She is putting, she's getting a lot of engagement. She has followers. So this is the first thing that I want to share with you. This is something I wasn't even aware of. I always knew that you could follow because I follow people like Richard Branson, Brene Brown. So big influencers always had the ability to be that are content creators always had a follow button. Well now, and it's been like this for quite a while, apparently, uh, you know, you leave a, you leave a platform for a little while, you come back and there's all kinds of new things. That, that's my lesson learned right there. But anyway, anybody can have the follow button, but this is what I want to tell you. Connect or follow. I switched to follow because I'm planning on creating content. You do not need to make your button a follow button if you do not plan to put content right. on LinkedIn. So it's pretty straightforward. Stay as a connect person. So even if you switch, when you go to your profile, you have an option to switch to, it's called creator mode. That should give you the key. You're not going to go to that if you don't plan on creating. So if you do switch to that, people can follow, but they can also still connect with you. They can also reach out. Now here's what's different about that. If you choose, it, if Matt and I are first degree connections, he can see my posts and I can see his. That's one of the biggest things. It's like friends on your feed. But guess what? Just like on, on your feed on Facebook. But guess what? Just like any news feed, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you only see the content that you start to engage with, right? Yeah. Because there's, all these platforms are trying to serve up, hey, you you uh, reacted to that post, so let's show you more of those posts. As soon as I reacted to Aaron's post, now I'm seeing Aaron's posts, right? Same thing happens across all of them. But when you are following, uh, if I follow Aaron, well, the reason I'm seeing Aaron's stuff right now, we are connected now, but I also followed her. So now I can see her content. Aaron can't see my content if she chooses to be a follower unless – I mean, unless she chooses to be a follower, does that make follower. sense? Yes. She won't. See, she won't see my content. So the benefit is, if you have great content, people might follow you, and they will see your content, and then you can have engagement and build build your following a bit. Okay. So I don't so, want to jump ahead here, just in case you do you do this. But if you were going to make the decision of whether or not to do connect or to follow, how much how much content do you feel you need to do in a weekly basis in order to make that switch? I honestly feel you should be posting daily, like five days a week, at least putting stuff in your post feed, not necessarily writing an article or doing a video okay. or doing stories, but at least posting five days a week, engaging content in your post, in your news feed. And that can be sharing, you know, I'll get to that in a minute. So here, here's yeah, what I, I didn't want to jump so, ahead. Okay. No, no, that's actually good, the, how to do it, but that's a great question. That's exactly it. You, you, that's a perfect question. I would not switch over to become follow button versus connect. And the connect button becomes kind of hidden when you switch to follow. Uh, unless you're really going to do something three to five times a week. And, it, and, and it's good content. <laughs> okay. Right. 
to, we'll get back to what's good content in a minute. So here's what happens and I'll explain it. And if you're watching the video, um, you'll see it. So I'm on Aaron's profile and she's a realtor, Jacksonville real estate, inspiring people to make positive changes in their lives. This is what's really cool about her. She's got a background in looking at her thing in life coaching and, and, um, you know, graduated University of Florida. She's really into that personal development. A lot of her posts that get engagement are these really cool motivational things. Um, and that's what caught my eye, uh, you know, about overcoming challenges and uh, not, you know, just how other people see you. Very, very powerful stuff. And and she's coming from a place of strength on that because it's something that's in her wheelhouse. It's and her last name is Moody for crying out loud. Oh, that's brilliant. And here's the thing. She's got 26,998 followers Yeah, wow. on LinkedIn. And I'm going to tell you why, because she posts content. Now she specializes in commercial real estate. So she's got a nice mixture of things when you go down into her feed, uh, you know, like how to make your offer stand out in a tight market. I'm looking at that. That's a featured blog post that she put. Now she's having people go over to her blog uh, she's taking people off of her site over to her website, which is fine. Uh, and then the key is the activity. So what caught me is um, this one right here, 335 reactions, 52 comments on a simple post. And these posts are beautifully done with, you know, just pictures of her. Sometimes this is classic Florida. I can see that, you know, Lanai into yep. a pond. Okay. <laughs> this is all the houses you go visit here. And she's got, uh, you know, learn to seek validation from yourself, not other people. And up here, she's got, when you struggle with people, pleasing tendencies or codependency, you feel the need to obtain approval for everything you do. White space. This is a key. Learn to trust yourself for that approval. Deep down, you know, um, what is best for you. And, and, my gosh, people are just all over commenting this. And then she's engaging. It shows that she's the author. She's responding back. And it's brilliant. Okay. Nothing to do with anything to do with real estate. All right. But she's engaging. If people want to know more, what better place for people to find out what you do than LinkedIn. Right. Um, so I just love this. So uh, that's number one is, uh, oh, and uh, so a couple things on that profile. Uh, that I already kind of pointed out, I guess. So let me come back and chat with everybody for a second. I'll come out of there. The is to, in your profile, you can uh, switch to follower if you're going to do that. And then what it did on hers, let me go back to hers. I'm not going to come in, but it says, it gives you an opportunity when you switch to follower to say, tell people what you're talking about. And when you do that, then it uh, it has hashtags right underneath her her headline. It says talks about inspiring commercial real estate Jacksonville and motivational. Those are her hashtag words. Okay, that are in that's in the uh, yeah. There you go. Thanks, Matt. Producing our show today. Well done. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that only happens that if you see that hashtag talk, you know, real estate or whatever. That's because the person has switched over to follower. And it's telling people that come to her profile, this is what she talks about. So now they'll go over and look and they'll start follow. If they want to follow her, they'll get her content. It's really awesome. Then they can go back and look at her profile and learn more about her, right? So that brings me to why you must have this all-star profile. And in the all-star profile guide, uh, it, it walks you through those 14 steps. I just want to point out three things that uh, that I really made a little different in, in the content, uh, in the guide. Right here, it says what's new in the guide. And one was adding services page, adding a services page. So let's go back to, we'll go back to Aaron's um, deal. And she's got it right here, providing services. We all have the ability to add this little area underneath your intro that says providing services. So when you go onto your LinkedIn, Matt, are you on your LinkedIn? I, I forgot what it said. Will you go to your LinkedIn profile so we can share with everybody? If they haven't turned this on, you should have a little scrolling thing in your profile that says, tell people you're hiring, uh, let uh, job people know that you're looking for a job. And it has this one, showcase your services. It says something like that. Will you see what it says on yours? Because I already know the right off. hand side you're talking. Yeah. Say again. Go in to edit your profile on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm there right now. What does it see? What does it show? Over on the right hand side. No, it's going to be underneath where you you do your intro, like your headline and all that. You should see a couple bars scrolling through. Oh, yeah. Through. Creator mode, manage my network, salary insights, and my items is what I see. Do you have anything there on uh, – you don't see anything there on – maybe in – Share recruiters, you're open to work. Share your hiring and attract qualified candidates. 
You don't have something about provide your services? No. Uh, or share your services? That's interesting. Uh, you should have something like that, even if you scroll all the way through it. Yep, I don't see it. All right, maybe. Here, let me see. Hey, wait, well, let's just do this. Well, you know, let's, oh, yeah. let, let, go ahead. Let me share, share my screen. It. Yeah, let me see if I can see it and we can look at it. But when you go to do that, it prompts you to say, what are your services? Tell a little bit about your services. And when people click on it, like when I click on hers, Aaron's, it goes to a page called your services page now that has a way for you to message her. It's about where she works. Does she work remotely? And then what she provides, writing, real estate, real estate marketing, and commercial real estate. Very cool. So this is what my page, my profile looks like. Okay, let me blow it up. So, so where are you it. talking? Right, right here. Right, so uh, right there where it says show recruiters, that's all you have. I don't know why you don't have. You know that what? Uh, I'm wondering because I've noticed sometimes. What if I? No, there's only two there. Oh, I'm do maybe... see, what, see. Click the open to button and just let me see if it has finding a new job. No, you, for some reason you don't have this on there. I don't know why. Maybe it's just selectively on there right now. I don't know. This is weird. But I had three things. I had get a job you know, be, tell people you're looking for a job, tell people you're hiring, which is the two you had. And then there is one that says share your services. Yeah. And I have an all-star profile and I post at least once a week. So it's not like, uh, I'm you, right, so can, can we go to your area where it says, um, hit add section, Matt, we're just doing this on the live here. Uh, yeah, this is good. So click add section next to open to, and then see if there is anything about services on that, about featured background, nope. skills, accomplishment. Those ones that are highlighted are things that you can, uh, okay, no, all right. So where was that creator mode? Right there, there right below the who's nope. viewed your profile. Creator mode off. Let's turn, no, down further underneath 28. Right there, there's Over a here. thing that says creator mode. Now yep. let's turn that on and see if it brings that other thing back. So you click on creator mode. Now you turn it on. And so what? let me tell you what everybody, what, if you're not, watching the video. So Matt went onto his profile. He saw the button that says creator mode and oh, I didn't want you to move forward. It said, I'm it sorry. said grow your network. Okay. I was trying to, I wanted well, here, to, wait, 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 we can probably go back. Let's just okay, go thank back. You. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So grow your audience with creator mode. Follow will be your primary action shown. Your content will be showcased more prominently on your profile. They move it up a little bit and you can show topics you post about on your profile. Okay. So he's going to move on to next. And then it's going to walk them and prompt them through. Tell us what you post about. Now it's prompting you with a few things that it's kind of seeing in your, in your profiles that interesting, but you can also add your own topics. So, you know, whatever it came up with coaching, real estate, I would probably put those in Matt on whatever coaching, real estate. Um, you can do like, uh, you can add up to five and then you can hit add topics. So I would put travel, hit add topics. And yeah, let's just, uh, start typing in stuff and you'll see. So he's typing in like travel and the hashtags come up in, in which I'm going to talk about hashtags in a minute search. It tells you what are other hashtags that are, that are, are, um, that are uh, used in LinkedIn. And that's the ones you should choose, choose the ones instead of your own that are more right. popular. Okay, good. So now he's done that. He, he hit saves. And what happens next is uh, creator mode has been turned on, learn more. Good. Uh, I, I say no thanks. I think it's just going to walk you through into a page. Okay. So now let's go back to your profile, Matt. And you, I'm going to go look at your profile and let me switch gears now and I'll go, let me share again. We'll pull up my share. And then from here, I will go in and find Matt on uh, LinkedIn and I want to see what it looks like. So Matt Emerson, and now what we're seeing is, I'm already connected with you, so maybe I can't yeah. see the follow. So Probably what I would not. have seen if I wasn't already connected with him is I would get a follow button right down here underneath his. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So that's the big thing I wanted to share with everybody regarding follow versus, um, see now how it says, talks about travel, coaching, motivation, real estate, and business planning. Isn't that cool, Matt? Yep. yep. All right, yep. So, all right, so uh, let's go back to, uh, chatting about a couple other things here. And so I talked about already what's new, adding a service page. The other thing that you can do in your, in your profile when you go is, and I think this is so cool inclusivity. Um, it is pride month right now in June, and it's an area that says pronouns and you drop it down and it just is basically let others know how you refer to be, uh, called like he, he, oh, yeah. He, him, she, her, they, them. It kind of covers all the spectrum, right? 
So uh, that's an option that you can put in. And then I already mentioned that cool featured area is where you can spotlight things you've written, but you can also spotlight a video you've done about yourself um, and your services or showcase what you do to sell a home or buy a, uh, help somebody buy a home. And that really shows up prominently. There's room for people to see too clearly Then they have to kind of scroll if they're on desktop. Uh, it looks a little different if they're on, you know, just on the mobile, it's different. So fall versus connect, we talked about. I want to talk about number three, give to get recommendations. This is so exciting. And thank you, Jennifer, uh, over at Celtic Realty, um, because you gave me you gave me a recommendation back, and I appreciate that, but I wanted to recommend her. So I practiced this whole technique, and I just did it yesterday, and it worked like a charm. So I was connecting and looking at, as a matter of fact, Matt Emerson sent me a request to recommend him. And so a couple feed, I, don't, I can't believe I've never done that. So uh, yes, I will do that, but to that point, you'll want to let people know that you're asking them for that. Because if I, if you don't go in and all the time, you'll get maybe a notification. I don't even know if I got a notification, but when I went down in my area to, to, cause I was working on some training for this, I was like, Oh, I, I have like six people who are asking me for a recommendation. So uh, make sure you tell people you're doing it. And I have an idea around that in just a moment. So, but even before that give to get simply means give somebody a recommendation then request a recommendation. All right. So who can you do this with? Well, first of all, do you have clients who are on LinkedIn and you're familiar with what it is they do for a living or they maybe have a service or whatever it is they do? Can you recommend them for what it is they do? Do you frequent their business or do you have experience with what it is they do? Give them a recommendation. Let them know that you're going to do that. They'll get a notification and then you're going to ask them to do the same for you. I'm telling you, it, it, it just, it was so great. Jennifer wrote this awesome recommendation. I really did the same for her, complimenting her on how hard she works and all the things that she does because she is a Wonder Woman and handles like so many different things uh, and is very passionate about what she does. And I wanted to share that. That was my experience with her, right? So very powerful. Uh, to do the give to get. Next idea is, do you have a testimonial somewhere else? Do you have a client who gave you a Google review or they gave you a uh, Zillow or realtor.com review? Why don't you go grab it, all right, and then send it to them in an email saying, look, I'm really working on my LinkedIn profile. Would you be, do me a favor and simply um, uh, post this in the recommendation request I just sent you? Okay. So don't have to write another one. They could cut and paste it. They might ch choose to embellish or do a little bit more on it, but you're helping them out, right? Now, you can't do that unless you're a first level connection with the person, right? So you must already be connected with them as a first level. So that should be something you should have done in the very beginning. So when you first met them, if you didn't, now's a perfect time to go, hey, Matt, I can't believe we never connected on LinkedIn. And, and so then maybe I give them a recommendation. That's the flow. And then I send them an email and maybe followed up with a call or text saying, hey, I just sent a request for a recommendation. Um, what's so cool is you don't have to go, hey, I recommended you. Will you do it for me? Because when they go to do it for you, they're going to see that you did it for them because it's going to pop up. If they finally log on to LinkedIn, they're going to be like, Jan O'Brien right. just recommendation. Of course, you're going to read it. It's a recommendation for you. And now you're going to be even more encouraged. They'll be more encouraged to write the recommendation for you, especially if you kind of follow that step. So now they can get the one. Now you can do the same idea, even if they didn't write a recommendation, but obviously if they did somewhere else, grab it and see if they'll do it for you on LinkedIn. All right. Any idea, anything else on that, Matt, any ideas around that? For no, I think you got it covered. All right, cool. And then uh, I want to talk about hashtags. So I'm going to demonstrate the hashtag phenomenon. So uh, hashtags are definitely a thing on LinkedIn. Uh, oh, yes, man. indeed, they are. Um, hold on. It's so funny. Matt's laughing because I I've am always, laughing. hashtags have always been important. Um, and, <laughs> and yeah, they are. They're everywhere. Okay, so watch this. This is, this is I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. So hashtags are all over the place on LinkedIn and so much so that let me just actually go to my profile and I'll start with that. So you are prompted to add hashtags now. So mm -hmm. 
hashtags are help you sort through all the craziness. You can follow hashtags, but I mainly want to just share the power tips here on how to search for popular hashtags and incorporate them. First thing I did is uh, recently is I added a couple key hashtags in my headline. Matt, I recommend you do the same thing right now while we're talking about it. And I even changed my headline to say, uh, make it a little more personal. You know, my teams help people buy and sell homes in Tampa. I actually should probably hashtag home. Don't go crazy with the hashtags, but I put a hashtag podcaster, veteran serving hashtag military, you know, hashtag veteran serving hashtag military relocations. Uh, this is what I want to be able to focus on, right? For when people are finding me on LinkedIn, uh, I hashtag real estate coach, okay? Because when people search for things, keywords on LinkedIn, you have a you'll have an opportunity to come up if you're using the hashtags that are popular that and you're writing about things that are about that okay so that's the first area that i did it plus you can do it in your about area and others okay now what you do is in the search bar you actually put the pound sign the hashtag sign in okay and you start typing in so i'm just going to start typing in real estate and then what pops up is real estate coaching for mine real estate what tell me what pops up for you real estate agent real estate goals expert you put in real estate yeah just type in hashtag real estate and tell me what you see real estate coaching real estate agent real estate coach real estate investing see it's real different it, yeah it has a, it has a lot to do with what you've already like i've been doing a lot of this cuz i use yeah it. what you've already searched absolutely what you what you've searched or what you've done but i we have slightly different things now what's happens matt do this with me okay so keep it up the hashtag real estate and then like go to anyone real estate investing or something i'm going to go to real estate broker click on it okay. it goes over to another page that says how many people follow how many people right now are following that hashtag? And for a real estate broker, it's only 847 and you can click follow. So I'm going to go back up and I'm already yeah, doing, I'm already doing, um, hold on. I'm already following real estate, but I'm going to go ahead and hit follow. And I'm going to, so I can see, so I want to tell you what, what, where does all this information go if you're interested in. So couple things, just like on Instagram or anything, if you want to go see what people are writing about for hashtag real estate, you can go to real estate. You can go to your followed hashtags, or you can simply type in real estate, hashtag, hashtag real estate, and see there's 4,177,742 people following real estate. So you clearly want to follow that. Then when you scroll over on your bra on your in your profile, you'll come to an area on the left that says your profile, what you've recently searched for, groups you belong to, any events that you've um, uh, you know you've uh, said you're going to or whatever. And then you have followed hashtags. So if you click on followed hashtags, it takes you over to this cool hashtag area where you can unfollow, you can uncheck, I don't want to follow that anymore. Uh, you know, so like real estate agent, military transition, uh, 39.8. See, I just realized that that's probably, well, military transition means, you know, getting out of the military. Um, but you can, you can follow hashtags. So if I want to come in and just see who, who's writing right now about military transition, um, and when you click on it, it just brings you to posts that people have used that hashtag. Yep. Pretty cool. All right. So now how can we use this? Well, it's all about finding ways to connect with something that you have in common with someone for ways for you to strategically reach out for people to find you, especially if you're going to be a content creator on LinkedIn, the hashtags are powerful. Uh, I will show you one more thing in here regarding hashtags. That's what I wanted to be able to do. So if I go back to home and I want to do a post, so I'm just going to go do a start a post on LinkedIn. And as soon as I pull up the area for the post, I want you to notice if you're watching and if you're not, I'm explaining to you that down in the lower left-hand corner of a blank post, it says add hashtag. Yep. So LinkedIn is all about the hashtag. Okay. And it will just put a hashtag in there and the same thing will start happening. If you start typing in real estate right in your post, it will pull up other common things that you could do. So this brings up the whole point of like how many hashtags, what do you think about that, man? Uh, no I, more I don't than like five. I, I think the you know three to five is probably a good number. Three to five is exactly what I put in my uh, training because I hate when people overstuff hashtags on an Instagram post or all these other things. And you can tell that they're just doing it to for marketing. Choose the best three to five. Um, yeah. 
and around hashtags, it's it's popular hashtags, but you could create a branded hashtag. You could use a city location hashtag. You know, it needs to be about your uh, content also. Whatever you're posting, it needs to be about yeah. that first and foremost. Then you can add industry tags. You can add company tag if you wanted to, or if you're trying to get. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have a branded a, a specific to you branded thing that you're trying to get out there. You have got to use that every single time you post anything. It's right. Got, I mean, it's part of your 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 hashtag strategy. So, but that's gonna eat up one of your you know three to five hashtags. So be smart about it. But if you're gonna like, if we really wanted to get going with WBNL coaching, right? So that would be our branded deal. Nobody's gonna be following it right now. See, there's but you can start just using it, right? So you would just start adding your branded hashtag to everything that you're posting or ones that are applicable to it. Uh, this isn't as then, tricky on LinkedIn, but it becomes tricky when you are doing something on Twitter, when you only have a certain amount of characters that you can actually right. use. So, you know, it, it, there's a difference. But here you can do as much as you want. So it's all good. All right. And uh, so that's hashtags. Totally love it. I uh, got some notes in the show notes for you there around the idea of what kind of hashtags we're talking about and the strategy around it. But the uh, last one I want to mention here today is my fifth little power tip, and it's about the LinkedIn app, okay? So there are four things that you can only do using the mobile app. So first of all, download the LinkedIn app. I particularly love the LinkedIn app. Of all the yep. apps, things that are out there, I think it has the smoothest, coolest interface and easy to use. And if you're going to be, you know, just like um, any strategy for whatever your preferred uh platform is you've got to be mobile. If you're, you know, have downtime, you're waiting in line, you're sitting somewhere at the doctor. This is where you could do engagement on your social media uh, platform and definitely on LinkedIn where you could comment on somebody and interact and post something and, you know, do a story. So that's the first thing that you can do only in the LinkedIn app is stories. So everybody I'm pretty confident at this time knows about stories and the stories in the LinkedIn app is just right at the top, across the top, just like it always is in all of them. You can see who has a story uh, and then you can click the plus button and create your own story. Not as robust as Instagram with all the filters and all that. It basically has four types of text and you can change the color and you can add some stickers. You can add a location at, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but man, talk about some powerful things that you can be posting in here, you know, stats, keeping current matters stuff. You know, uh, just you out doing whatever you do all day long, you know, uh, talking to a client, out showing a property, you know, whatever it is. That's number one. Number two, you can record your name pronunciation in the app, which is so cool. You click on your profile, like you're going to go edit your profile in the app, and there's a little place for you to record. If you have a crazy name, everybody mispronounces it, you can choose to do that. I feel like my name is pretty easy to, in yours, yeah. Matt, we probably wouldn't I do have that. no problem. Exactly. 100% a great thing for somebody who, you, you know, you just people mispronounce your name. That's the second thing you can do. The other cool thing you can do is when you are in the app and I'm holding it up, there is uh, right where your profile is again. Yeah. Okay. You have to go into your profile like you're going to edit your profile. Now in your profile picture, there will be a plus sign, a little plus sign next to your profile mm -hmm. picture. That's where you can change out the photo. You could do it right from your phone. But this is the only thing you can do on the on the mobile app. Add a cover story. Introduce yourself with a 30-second video. So cool. cool. You click on that. It will open up like you're going to do a video right then and there, which you could do if you wanted to. Or you could upload a video that you record. Okay? And you upload it right into there. Uh, and then what happens is your profile, even on the desktop, puts a little – Okay, orange circle around your profile and it lets people know to click on it and up will pop the video where you're telling them who you are, what you do, who you take, who you help. Isn't yeah, that cool? that's awesome. Yeah, okay, very cool. cool. And then the last thing you can do on your LinkedIn profile is share a QR code. So you know how it in Instagram, you can go get your QR code of your Instagram profile. Well, good old LinkedIn has the same thing. And when you are in your, just literally in the profile, go to the search bar at the top and you'll see a little icon that kind of looks like a QR code, kind of hard to make out. And then up will pop your, uh -huh. your QR code, which you can download to your photos. You can share and you can put in your marketing. And I mean, and I think it's cool because QR codes are, are, are an in thing. It's a, it's a COVID side benefit. Everybody knows what a QR code is. Yep. All right. So there you go. That's my power new tips. Very exciting stuff on LinkedIn. 
getting more engagement. And like anything though, you can't be all things to all people and you can't master all the, all the platforms. You got to choose it. You know, like Twitter is out for me. I just like to look at Twitter to see how my golden Knights are doing and watch the news. Okay. Hey, but at the very least, at the very least, you have to have an all-star profile, whether you have committed to being a poster all the time on LinkedIn or not, because people will look for you on LinkedIn. And I think Instagram, I just don't think, I think the more I look into this, Matt, you know, Instagram is fun, but you, it just takes a commitment and you only have so much time in the day. I'll right. probably use Instagram for my personal posts and stuff, but not for business. Cause I like it when I'm out and about and whatnot. But for me, it's going to be, you know, I like YouTube and LinkedIn. That, that's my, those are YouTube for very specific reasons of stuff we're doing, but I think LinkedIn for the business side of things. And I just, I've made that decision in the past few weeks. Because you've been saying it to all the coaching clients we've been having over the last few months that you need to focus and pick a lane, right? So I love practicing what you preach. It's an awesome thing. All right. Well, anyway, the, what's coming? Don't don't forget to get the free the free guide now, and then we will be once we're done with our training, uh, we are going to be putting out a free version of this overall LinkedIn course that we're putting together, which will have just a little mini course that we'll talk about, like I'll walk through the LinkedIn profile, which is basically take the guide and I'll walk through and show you exactly how to do it. And a couple other uh, steps that we'll have available for you. And I would say in the next 30 days, we'll have that available for you as a, as a free, a free course and a little introduction to all the other training that we have over at WBNL coaching, which in the coming 60 days, we will, we are revamping all our training. We're very excited to launch all that. And all you guys that listen to us on the podcast will probably have a a special podcast only um, uh, discount code, super secret code coming for you. So thanks super for secret code. Yeah. Don't you'll, you'll uh, need to be watching out for that. So that is a wrap for this week's uh, podcast. You can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. It's episode 169. And Brian, you were about to allude to something just a moment ago that I know you want to talk about. So how did the ducks do yesterday? The Vegas Golden Knights <laughs> play tonight at home in the fortress to 18,000 plus strong. They are 3-2 against the Colorado. Everybody's all about Colorado. Sorry, Colorado. I think you're going to go down tonight. Well, I hope. It's, it's amazing. They were down 0-2, Matt, in the series. Came back in two amazing games, tied it up. Then the other night, in an overtime, won the game. It was the most exciting game I've ever seen. I think I, it was late here, and I was like jumping up and down, ah, waking up the house probably. So exciting! The captain Mark Stone scored in overtime in like the first 50 seconds. So super, and it was in Colorado, so that was you know, not good for those dudes. So they come back tonight. They could wrap it up, and they would have won four games in a row. They could get pushed to seven and it's back to Colorado. But wish my guy, wish my ducks well. Good, Adam. Go ducks. Go knights. Go, go knights. Go. And let's oh, see what God. else in the hockey world. The Tampa Bay Lightning have advanced to the third round. Uh, they and so did the New York Islanders. They just beat the Boston Bruins last night. I'm a little sad about that. So we got yeah. that set up now. It's going to be the Tampa Bay versus New York. And the Montreal Canadiens are waiting on the winner of the Golden Knights, which which I'm pretty confident will be the Golden Knights. And then uh, the winners of those go to the Stanley Cup. There it is. That is awesome. your sports hockey update. That is WBNL Sports Center update. And on the wandering front, I am going to Sequoia National Park on Monday, and I cannot wait. Sequoia, big trees, love it. Back to awesome. nature. We're only, going up, we're, we're only going up for the day. We did that last, uh, in, I think it was back in December when we did that, and it is awesome. So we're just doing a quick day trip, but it is going to be so nice to be up in the Sierra and in the big trees. And I am uh, just so looking forward to a little rejuvenation. That is hashtag wandering. Wandering. That is Finally. hashtag wandering. But not lost. Never lost. Exactly. When you walk. This is awesome. I can't wait to hear about it. You'll have to share info and new photos and experiences on our next podcast absolutely that will be done i'm just counting that i'm running the clock till monday literally <laughs> thank you very right. much i love it well have fun yep i will well that's it everyone get up get out watch hockey go for a walk be forever wandering but not lost mm -hmm.